systems also. And uh, if the budget does not allow, the barangays put up battery charging stations. You can bring your batteries to these battery charging stations, even if you are very far from, from such things. Um, now, uh, with the, well, I don't know whether uh, my friend uh, Jess here will talk about the Renewable Energy Act of 2008, but I would like to tell you that this act has, is providing a lot of incentives. There are some policy uh, mechanisms which are being discussed, uh, with uh, the National Renewable Energy Board, like feed-in tariff, uh, net metering, clean energy options, priority dispatch, uh, renewable uh, 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 portfolio standards. We expect that the uh, policy mechanisms may be ready by May or June. Uh, there are some uh, consultants here who, are, who may be able to talk about them. Bert is also here. Yes, it's over here. Such that we can discuss maybe your inputs if you have inputs about this policy market mechanisms. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I'm glad that Mr. Sarapika actually started the uh, kind of points uh, uh, dealing with the supply and also with that of uh, the demand side. You know? Now, I think that's very important for us to uh, recognize that uh, the energy sector will always have to deal with the energy chain from energy production to end use. And problems are occurring now will always be dealing with every small problem along the chain. It cannot be just uh, because of one side of the equation. Now, for the Department of Energy, together with the attach agency, ensuring energy security is, of course, as you have always hear us, uh, our overriding objective. That is always the main objective for us to make sure that the industry players, the stakeholders uh, in the energy sector will always be able to provide energy, not just electricity, but energy in whatever form it is, where and where it is needed. The Philippines is, of course, very different from all the other countries. We are an archipelago. And therefore, the um, uh, approach to ensuring energy security will have a different way, no? uh, uh, a different scheme compared to other countries. And we're trying to do this um, on an island basis right now. But I think it was also mentioned that we're trying to have an interconnected system. But when and exactly how we can have the whole of the country interconnected is still a big question for us. Uh, I think in one of the slides, um, if this going to be an excess capacity, uh, I think specifically in the case of Mindanao, then it's good to have that uh, chain, no? uh, or that interconnection between Mindanao and Visayas, and then Mindanao be able to export it to uh, the Visayas. But such is not the case right now. No? Uh, uh, Mindanao is very much in, in deficit. Now, averting power shortage requires both long-term and short-term approaches. And uh, I think uh, it's a mix of uh, the uh, points that uh, have been discussed by um, our main presenter and also, of, uh, I believe, by all of uh, the, re the reactors here. And um, if we're talking about long term, definitely the law will have to be uh, considered. And with respect to uh, IPIRA, which is actually now the main law, more or less guiding the development in the power sector, there are a number of amendments. But of course, I'd like to see it in on uh, the main uh, program, which is that of privatization. IPIRA requires privatization of the generation asset and together with transmission and the sub-transmission assets. But again, the law provides that the uh, government through it and be the default wholesale supplier. Or even without that provision, government being in place should be able to provide for the requirements of the economy. Now, if government will continuously be not allowed to provide, to have or to enter into new contracts and then provide for new assets, new generating assets in particular, then we'll really have a hard time doing that function. So I think uh, one of the amendments that we, we will be asked is really to look at that provision. If government, or how much of a security assets should be retained in government. And if we are already 100% privatized, then the next approach will be to establish how much of the new capacities 
expected in the future should be maintained or should be allowed in government. Not that government should be uh, in competition with the private sector, but that asset should be there to be able to provide for contingency situations. I think in the many charts that have been shown to us, we've seen, of course, the situation where uh, Luzon is going to be in a normal condition. No? But, of course, we've recently experienced that because of a 600 megawatt capacity plant, power plant uh, going down, then we suffer no? in a uh, irritation of brownouts. So, if government would have an emergency or a contingency capacity, then maybe we should. We will not be able to uh, have that kind of a, a problem. And again, a related issue on that maybe is that uh, the Philippine power sector is really not that big. No? And therefore, we need to be able to have a look as to what size of power plants should be allowed. Not that we do, oh, no. uh, maybe clear the point is that if an investor would like to put up a 1,200 megawatts, then maybe yes, it should be allowed. But is it going to be one big plant? or it should be a smaller set of modules adding up to a total of 1,200 megawatts, as an example. Government should continuously monitor the performance of these power plants to ensure that they continuously are able to provide for a generation that is required from them. And in monitoring, uh, uh, monitoring, sorry, monitoring will not be, uh, I think, uh, the only factor. If aging power plants are really not going to be expected to perform at the same level as they were during their technical life, then maybe we should be able to consider having an age cap for our power plants. That may be a new idea or maybe not, but um, we've been, uh, I think, used to having a capacity you know, or a, 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 a resource continuously being operated, no? ang that kaya sige. The same way we do with our car, cars, with our vehicles. And I hope that can be changed. With respect to the power situation, um, grids uh, are also, should be, uh, grids should be able to look at uh, having an expanded capacity and even fuel mix. The specific point in case is of course Mindanao. We're proud to have Mindanao, about having about 53% dependent on hydro, the cheapest, the cleanest, and a multi-purpose actually resource. No? But because of El Nino, suddenly they're having the biggest of the problem. So even in the areas where we have resources, or renewable energy resources, there should still be reserve capacities running alternative fuels. I think, uh, what do you want? also mentioning earlier that there, the renewable energy program is not trying to replace the whole no, of uh, the existing capacities on fossil fuels. Uh, but these renewable and the traditional sources of energy should be able to at least work together to ensure that the required different forms of energy, be it electricity or whatever, is going to be made available when and wherever they are required. Reserves market is not yet fully in place. What we have is the spot market no? uh, in Luzon. And uh, the Visayas, uh, of course, have been wanting to have it also established in the area. And uh, the department through uh, the uh, MC is actually working uh, towards that end. But we believe that on top of the spot market, the reserves market should not be uh, started no? and really provide for not only the competition, but also for that needed security of additional uh, capacity. Climate change through El Nino have actually uh, gave us a lot of problems already.